Hello and welcome to this quick interview. I've got here Jordan Schoen of Shropshire Car Care and we're going to be talking about your business, your journey through detailing, your career. Um, we are today in Hinkley at New Look Detailing and we've just been doing a colour lock day with Ram of Colour Lock. How did you find today went? Really interesting. Yeah, I am quite surprised just how much knowledge I've picked up from today. Enjoyed meeting lots of other members as well and uh, got a really good insight into what I thought was leather cleaning but on the next level and I'm really glad I came. That's brilliant. And I say it was a PVD member only, I think there were about 15, 16 of us. Yeah. Um, and it was a really good get together. And I like these for the technical side as well, but also for the sort of the social side. And yeah. you were saying also that you haven't met many other members too often, you know, they're no, your local ones. Um, and it's good to put names to faces yeah. and faces. Yeah, exactly. To In person, yeah. That's cool. So, Jordan, you are 29 years old. I am. Um, how did you get into detail? Um, my father bought a brand new car when I was 17. What when was I, it? Uh, Megan R26 in nice. liquid yellow. Um, he became very interested in looking after it properly. Um, he himself joined Detailing World um, and bought an excessive amount of products like we all do when we first get into it. Um, emptied his bank account several times for posh waxes and stuff and didn't really end up using them himself. So uh, when I got my first car, uh, one litre Corsa. Classic car. I used all the world's best stuff on it and I got it <laughs> looking good and I just grew a passion from that really um, and it's been the same up till today. Still passionate about, about what I do and I'm, I'm glad he did what he did and got me into it as well. So with your dad getting all the products and you then getting to use them on that stunning one litre Corsa of yours. Yes. Um, now cycle forward, I'm guessing that would be when you're 18ish. Yep. Uh, as I say, you're now 29. What's been that journey to where you've now got Shropshire Car Care? Um, job to job, nothing special. Agency work, stacking shelves, factory stuff, nothing I was really into. Did a lot of skiving, spent a lot of time on my phone during these jobs, but <laughs> my, my passion still, you know, lied in, in posh products for cars and using the world's best things and making cars shiny really in a, in a basic sense. So you're very much working to live and it was just what paid the bills? Yeah, just, I just wasn't passionate about anything and, and, and one day I, I took a gamble and that was to start making money from, or a business at least, from my hobby mm -hmm. um, and no looking back really. Can you remember what your first paid job was? It was a family people carrier Japanese thing it was horrible. Turned out really well though. I've still got photos of it somewhere. And it's and in terms of developing, because obviously that was the balloting side early yeah. on, and then that worked into detailing. How did you sort of go from where you are now? Because most of your work now is is correction work and coatings. Yes. Um, and so when it came to picking up a machine polisher and making that kind of movement from essentially cleaning cars to correcting the paint. Yeah. How did that kind of process happen? I'll be honest, it wasn't that way around. I, I, I think I picked up a machine polisher before I learned how to clean a car properly or valet a car properly. Um, because back in those days, we thought we could pick up a machine polisher and instantly make a car amazing. Uh, and to us at that time, we did. Um, and then as I turned it into a business, then I quickly learned that becoming a good valeter was more important for the initial end result on a detailing job, um, hoovering a car properly, cleaning areas that other local hand car washers wouldn't think to, etc. Um, so I would say that I did more detailing side of things, you know, wax coatings and sealants before I truly learned how to do the basics. I, I think that's an endemic thing actually. With um, detailing, so to speak, machine work being so accessible, um, you know, a lot of people have, have cut their teeth during the 80s, the 90s, the noughties mm -hmm. as valeters doing, yeah. you know, the, 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 not just the sort of the really dirty sticky jobs, but efficiently cleaning cars thoroughly in, in a limited amount of time with all sorts of equipment. Yeah. And so you get these people who turn up with their Dash 6 Pro Pluses or whatever, yeah. and they think, oh, I'm a detailer now, I don't need to learn the valeting side necessarily. And I was that kind of person at one stage. Um, but the, the passion you know, took over and I just wanted to make sure I did every process to the best of my ability and if I didn't know how to, I wanted to know how to. Yes, so it was kind of in reverse, it was, it was the machine side then to the, to the valve yeah. teams. Yeah. And how did, you, how did you improve yourself through those times? Have you done lots of training courses or was it self-taught? Um, I, went, I went on a, a course in Shrewsbury um, with 
Gordon Muir from Define Detail and basically just whilst I knew how to handle a machine I wanted to know how to get the best from my current knowledge um, and to further my knowledge and it was to this day when I pick up the machine polisher I still think about the things he taught me on that day. Um, a lot of things that don't always get taught unless you meet someone like Gordon. Um, hopefully get to see him again soon but, um, but yeah I just basically wanted to get a further head start into it because I didn't want to get stuck in um, a process that was wrong and continue to do it mm. wrong yeah, which for is a very time. easy to do yeah, actually. It is, yeah. and actually it's really nice I mean I know Gordon a bit as well um, and he is they call him the grandfather of detailing mm -hmm. um, and he's, he's been around for a long long time mm -hmm. and what I really like was how how he, he is, you know, a lot, a lot of the top detailers won't necessarily do training or it would be very much a, a money thing, whereas he's very about imparting knowledge and helping people yeah. and guiding people. Yeah. And I remember you saying just outside when we were talking beforehand, you know, every time I pick up my machine, Gordon's head pops into my mind. So I think you probably want to apologise for that. But at the same time, it's great that there are people, those kind of bastions of society. I got bothered by Don Colbeck for using the word bastion. I don't think it's rude. I use it in a very complimentary way, but a, a, uh, a founding member, so to speak, of the detailing industry, I guess, um, actually taking the time to help people at the early stage of their career and, and how important that has been. Yeah, and I'm sure he'll be touched to know that that has, has had such an impact over 10 Good. years. Yeah, there's not enough people like Gordon out there, I don't think, but with what he's taught me, hopefully I can be that person for the next guy that wants to learn how to do it um, hopefully but yeah I always refer to what you know Gordon taught me from day one um, it was it was about six hour a day um, and what I thought I knew was flipped on its head and I quickly was able to progress and and do things better than ever and I think uh, an important thing about that was the fact that you did take that on board and you adjusted because mm -hmm. I see from my point of view I often see you know on the one hand a lot of the really experienced guys aren't necessarily helping those bring up they see them as a threat yeah. on the other hand though you do get the guys who've been going at you know three six nine months yeah. think that they know everything and then will not be told mm -hmm. otherwise and yeah. so it's a, it's a two-way thing you've got to be it's open difficult. to it yeah it's difficult to be open-minded when you do the same thing day in day out your way mm -hmm. but I think it's also important because what one guy knows better than you will only improve both of you. So I think it's important to always keep an open mind on anything. Yeah. Even if you've done the same thing your way for 10 years, you know, things can change and it will only benefit you to find a better way with anything. Things move on. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what, in your experience now, has been your most enjoyable car to detail? Not your favourite car, your most enjoyable one to detail? Good question. I do enjoy all the cars I do, mainly for the customer's reaction. Um, that always makes it worthwhile, even if you're stressing for days on end, whether it's good enough or you know if they're going to be ridiculous. Or well, that's the thing again with detailers is often you'll find that detailers are spending way longer than what they're being paid to do, yeah. just to get chasing. They call it chasing those last swirls. Yeah. And again, that's a that's a business side. Again, as an enthusiast, you can do that. You've got all the time in the world. You're doing it for fun. For a yeah. professional, you've got a set amount of time to achieve a set amount of things. Yeah. And um, if you do go over time, then I'm afraid that just comes off your bottom line, not it the does. customers. Um, I've been very much focused on being persistent and it's important for me to enjoy what I do every day. I look forward to a Monday morning, I look forward to going to work um, and that means a lot more to me than anything. I don't have many overheads or dependents, um, which you know I know a lot of members of PVD do, um, but it was important for me up till now to, be, to enjoy what I do every day, um, all the time. Um, I'm happy to do seven days a week for, you know, I've, I've worked for the past 40 days straight so far um, this year, but um, I enjoy it, so that's why I can do it. Now I want to, you know, focus on making it work for business reasons. Mm. Well, um, isn't, isn't that refreshing? I don't know about you, but I don't come across many people, even in our trade, to be honest, who say, I bounce out of bed on a Monday morning, really happy to go to work and, and go there. Bounce. Well, no, not at our age. It's a <laughs> creek. Yeah. But yeah, and I need to stay focused on that because it is stressful, it is hard work. Um, a lot of effort goes into what we've learned and what we do on these customer cars. So I think it's important to focus on making sure that you are happy doing it, otherwise it becomes a chore. Mm. And, and when we do go above and beyond for not enough money, I think a lot of us could say that we like, should be you know, charging more for our work. If we didn't enjoy it, we wouldn't, we wouldn't do it. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think your point now about how you're trying to be more commercially focused, yeah. I think it's a, it's a very legitimate thing because uh, a lot of guys, particularly if they're coming from the enthusiast level, we have, we have this sort of strange dichotomy where we've got those who come from a professional background yeah. who have maybe retired, maybe it's something like the police force or the army where you have to retire a bit earlier than most, and they're like, right, I'm going to become a detailer. And they, they take a very business-like approach to it, quite often lose sight of the technical side. Yeah. By the same token, you get the enthusiasts who come into the industry from the other end, from the, this is what I want to do, and um, they're, from a technical point of view, often very, very good. Yeah. Um, but from a business point of view, um, some really very, very simple errors are made quite often, and, and I see it from my point of view as kind of both sides of the I'm common. one of those people. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm not business orientated. Um, I just continue to do what I do the best I can, and if anything, it's the rest has done its own. Well, you yeah. said you're operating on low overheads, and again, that's nice to have a unit that doesn't cost the world, to have the insurance and have all the necessary bits mm -hmm. in there, but no excess, mm -hmm. allows you to run smoother. And you were saying earlier, if you have a quiet month, it's not the end of the world. It's not a, a no, huge stress no. situation. We don't want those months, but um, I don't. It doesn't cause too much stress if it were to go quiet. Gotcha. Um, but at some point, you might get other overheads like children or a super addiction and that sort of thing. Yeah. And so having a, a kind of a financially optimized business makes sense as well. Yeah, of course. And how do you intend to do that? How would you kind of, as I say, financially optimize? I hate that phrase, but I can't think of anything better at the moment. Charge accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely need to restructure my pricing. Um, do things better than others. Um, yes, yeah, not necessarily right. convince customers why they should use me, but just you know the proof is in in, in what the end result. So. Well, it's interesting. We had an interview um, with Afagula, who's who's just started at this massive unit in central London. Well, not quite central London, near Ace Cafe, and it's huge. The open day was full of Ferraris and Zagatos and all sorts of things. Yes. And he, you know, the, the thrust of that interview that will already be on the YouTube channel um, is about how um, whatever happens, don't worry about too much about the money. You've got to have the vision on the quality of your work. That is the number one most important thing. Yeah. And I think that's something that five years ago I wouldn't have supported. I would have sat there and said, no, actually, you need to come up with a business plan. You need to have it very empirically sort, sorted out. And I think that still stands if your number one. Um, objective is to create a profitable business. However, if your objective is to create a lifestyle that you enjoy, mm -hmm. that can also sustain you in terms of mortgage and all the rest, then perhaps actually what Affirm, what you're saying, is, is by the sounds of it, a far better solution, which mm -hmm. is focused on quality and enjoying it, and then everything else will kind of fall into place one way or another. To have a good amount of money left at the end of the month, I consider a bonus. Um, I'm trying to make it more of a priority. But um, I don't want to stop enjoying what I do by being too focused on business side of things. I'd be interested for someone to do that side for me. Gotcha. And do you think, I mean, again, business expansion is a huge topic. And again, there are lots of options. You can franchise, you can bring people on, you can subcontract, you can um, do a sort of referral system. There are all different ways of expanding. Personally, I feel employment is the best way forward to build a business. I you agree. employ people, you invest in them. And you know, a lot of guys are terrified they're going to go off and set off their own business, which often they do. Mm -hmm. But that's a risk. And you've got to judge character mm -hmm. as to whether they can do that. And also, you've got to look after them. A lot of guys are like, oh, what's the minimum wage now? And I'm saying that's not the question you need to ask. You need to ask is, what is a fair wage for somebody who's going to do a good job and be loyal? And yeah. the answer is rather more than the living wage, I suspect. Yeah, I think when it comes to employment, you need to incentivize what they're doing because it is amazing what detailers do, in my opinion, um, in comparison to all the other offerings out there, hand car washes, etc. And to incentivize an employee or potential employee is more important than anything because it gives them a reason to enjoy coming to work as well. Because they will benefit from you know, a well-paid job. And I think detailing is important. I mean, again, I remember talking to a guy who runs a big valeting company down in the southeast, and he's got, I think, he must have probably two dozen vans at least on the road now. And he was like, I only get people from the army, and they only last six months. And his idea was, and it's very successful, go through, they more or less burn people out, mm -hmm. and it's very, very cutthroat. But he's a businessman. Mm -hmm. That's the primary thing. Whereas you're a detailer, and that is important to be different. And I agree. Investing in somebody, paying them a fair wage, incentivizing them, I think, absolutely right. Um, and, and working as a team, because it's quite a solitary existence. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. And one thing you were saying about today, it was quite nice to meet people. It was, yeah. Sat there, it's it's opened in my eyes to maybe I should be a bit more outgoing in the detailing industry, you know, meeting the people that I buy my products from or see and pick up tips from, you know, on the, on the Facebook page and things like that. Um, it's good to meet people. You see a different side to them and a more interesting side. And I've picked up a lot more information today than I would have 
you know, over a, a month's worth of talking online to somebody. So mm. I think it's good to meet people in person, definitely. I'm at 100% on that. And actually, quite often, from my point of view, again, managing the PBD group, mm. sometimes there are disagreements between individuals. Yeah. And the thing is, I've usually met both of those in person. And I know that they would be getting on really, really well if it was in person. Yeah. But blooming Facebook, sitting in the middle, and, and that kind of written side kind of miscommunicates things. Yeah, it's difficult. Um, and I, I am known for getting the wrong end of the stick a few times <laughs> in the past. But no well, when, when Jordan, as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in a non-patronising way really, really proud of Jordan because in the early days, you joined a number of years ago and I remember in the early days there were lots of sort of battles of will, if we say, between people. Um, and not all Jordan's fault by any means, it's other, other strong characters abrading and stuff yeah. like that. And now, every time I see Jordan post within our group, he's always helping others and I think that's a really good thing to see going out of your way, taking time, you're saying now you focus really on the harder questions and that's cool, that's yeah. brilliant, um, and actually going and offering advice and doing so in a manner that is not patronising and, and that is helpful. Um, and we've got a lot of members like that and that is something I, you know, it reinstalls the faith after a tough day yeah. to watch a little thread going on, oh try this, try that, oh well about this, you know. Yeah. And that sort of thing is, is really good and that's what sticks us all together, I guess. Yeah. It is easy to argue with other like-minded people, but that's because we're all so passionate about what we do. Um, and we're also focused on being better at what we do as well. So when a lot of the members get together, you know, arguments will happen, but at the end of the argument, I think it, it's never horrible. No. And you know, it's a good thing that people argue, I think. You know, it's constructive criticism. It makes and sense change, yeah. forward. I like a good argument, nothing wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, taking a macro approach then, back to the detailing industry, yeah. um, you are uh, now very much established with your you know, record in there, I'd say, because how long, how long has Structure Car Care been going for specifically? Six years. I Six think. years. So that's a kind of a mature company now. Okay. Um, where do you see um, both the industry going? Bear in mind, we've got fun things like Brexit ahead of us. We've got things like more and more people having cars on the Never Never on finance. Uh, we've got uh, the impact of Brexit, for example, could be on hand car washes and the cost of getting your car done mm -hmm. on the side. Um, there's also new technology coming in. So yeah. we've got you know, this movement, this balance between we've had the ceramic pro coatings and they're obviously still a very big deal. We've got PPF, yeah. but then there are a lot of people who've got into PPF and then backed out again as soon as they realise it's actually quite difficult to do and you need a lot of kit. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. there are some people I've talked to and they said, oh, we're going to go back to waxing. Waxing is going to be the number one. And I kind of quietly hope they're right. But yeah, me too. What do you, you reckon that could be an option? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're all on our coatings at the moment and they're, they're not as fun or rewarding as a wax, in my opinion. Um, the benefits are for the customer. Um, they're not as easy to apply, the coatings. Um, so I would like things, I'd like waxes to move on. I think they've been left behind a little recently. Um, I don't know what the future holds for protection products. Um, as much as we'd all like to be the first people to offer something new, um, I very much wait for hypes to die down Yes. Um, because I'm putting products on customers' cars, not my own, and I wouldn't want to use something that I didn't know hadn't stood the test of time, um, and I won't get involved until six months down the line. So yes, I am late to the game, but there's a reason behind why I do that. There's always and there's always a risk with early adopters and 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 some you know they got onto something early and then they get the reputation for being that person but then sometimes if, if a product turns out to be not all that said it be and then they're, they're the ones who pull down and buy it and I agree it's a sort of a risk mitigation yeah. side and again it's like with ceramic coatings with a uh, you know a, a two thousand year guarantee and all the rest of it so well how have you achieved that well we put it in a weathering machine for twenty five minutes and that simulates twenty five thousand years or whatever and and you sit there and think yeah it's not quite the same yeah. as sticking it on a car in Wolverhampton and having it commuting backwards and forwards to crew every day of the week yeah. and then seeing if it's so many variables in everything yeah. so yeah absolutely so um what are you most looking forward to this year you've, you've planned out this year you know what you're kind of doing although it's already escaping us pretty quick it turns out that we're not yeah. far off may it's a good been a good year so far best first quarter i've ever had and i think that's because i'm really focused on pushing things forward uh, very much setting my ways for recent years but you know trying to sell some products to customers um, there's finance um, options now uh, for detailers. Um, I'd like to become certified by a few brands I've been waiting a long time for. Are you allowed to say which ones? Uh, I don't see why not. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing is because you're going to see, you were saying you mentioned earlier that you're going to see Gordon. Yeah, I think he'll be on the third day of the Car Pro course um, next month and also been accepted on Max Protect's course as well. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Again, two brands or products that have stood the test of time and are very well established. And I'm happy I waited and persisted and was as patient as I am. And hopefully it goes well. 
I'm, yeah. I haven't passed yet <laughs> uh, or been certified yet, but I, I hope to be. Well, they're both interesting products. I mean, Max Protect do some really interesting coatings yes. like UNCR and stuff. Exactly. Um, I, I'm fascinated by the, the difference between them and other ones. Yeah. And then again, CarPro are great. I mean, they know their stuff, mm -hmm. their establishment. They've been around for a long yes. time, but they're just a solid, reliable, and they're constantly developing as well with their latest products. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that would be fun. And are you coming to Waxstock this year? Uh, after today, I might just turn up. Yeah, now I know some more faces and uh, yeah. That'd I'll be probably will. Well, remember, members get a, a cheaper ticket as well, so I can talk to you about that. We'll get that I just do that. <laughs> anyway, Jordan, thank you so much for taking the time no to talk problem. to us. It's been a pleasure meeting you, and, you. and I'm sure we'll meet again soon. Yeah. Um, and thank you for taking the time and, and talking to our watchers no about running a business and how to make it successful and, and your journey. Thank you.